talking about espresso martinis. So my name is Dan Fellows. I'm the two-time World Coffee and Good Spirits Champion. And in short, that basically means I love coffee and I love cocktails. And obviously the espresso martini is a really, really popular, famous and incredible version of that. So I'm going to be starting today by giving a little brief history of the espresso martini. Uh, talking about where the drink came from, where it currently is and maybe where it's going. And then we're going to be doing three demonstrations of my personal kind of favourite variations on an espresso martini. So the first of which is going to be based on Monin's salted caramel syrup. I'm going to be recreating the espresso martini but with a slight twist and a flavour profile of rum and raisin, which is one of my favourite kind of variations on this drink. Uh, it can also be served over ice cream and it's very delicious. The second drink uh, is going to be a bit more of a tropical twist. I guess tropical spice would be a good way to sum it up. I'm going to be using the modern winter spice syrup and then some really kind of interesting uh, twists on the espresso martini and some slightly more tropical kind of fruity flavours. And then the third is going to be based on the modern orchid syrup or almond and this is going to be recreating a frangipan kind of flavour profile. So these are the three drinks but I appreciate I'm a bartender I'm a barista, I'm very fortunate to have equipment in my house. So what I'm going to be doing today, in here I do have lots of kind of cocktail equipment, but this is then firmly closed. So I'm going to be using things around the house to make these drinks, which you might have at home. So I'm going to be using things like a protein shaker, and obviously a protein scoop. I'm going to be using an egg cup, inspired by Kenji, the legend. I'm going to be using a capsule machine, which you might have at home. I'm going to be using a blender, and last of all, I'm going to use my son's baby bottle. So stay tuned for that at the end. Actually a really useful tool. So the espresso martini, where does it come from? So it was invented by a bartender called Dick Bradsall in the 1980s in the Soho Brasserie. It was kind of ahead of its time because coffee cocktails I think are really, really popular now. And this has paved the way for these things. So Dick was working in the Soho Brasserie, so the story goes. Uh, a supermodel walked in, sat at the end of the bar, really kind of uh, fed up after a long day, wanted a drink that, in her words, we're going to wake her up and mess her up. So we didn't want to uh, swear. So Dick kind of got thinking, obviously he had the coffee machine in the corner of the bar, which perhaps didn't see the use that perhaps it could have done. Um, he used espresso as the base of the drink to wake her up. He also added coffee liqueur to, again, wake her up. A little bit of sugar for the kind of carbohydrates and sweetness to balance the drink and then vodka, which is going to be the tool to mess her up. So this was the foundation of the espresso martini. It wasn't actually called the espresso martini to begin with, it was called the vodka espresso, which perhaps is a more sensible name. It became known as the espresso martini because it was the 1980s, uh, every drink seemed to be called a martini, particularly if it was served in a classic old school V-shaped martini glass. Um, this kind of developed and became what's known as the espresso martini. In between that, there was also a variation on the rocks called the pharmaceutical stimulant, and I'm going to be using this version for the blended drink in the middle, the winter spice, because I don't want to create a slushy. I want to blend it for the texture and then chill it down over ice. So they're the kind of three variations of an espresso martini, which are realistically very similar. And we're going to get started with the first one. So the first drink is a rum and raisin flavour profile based on an espresso martini. So Ingredient wise, we're going to be using espresso, so I'm very lucky to have an espresso machine at home and it's really important that when you do brew espresso, you get the very best possible coffee and the best possible base at the foundation of the drink. So I'm using the coffee from El Salvador. It does have kind of flavours of orange, which tie into the orangey flavours of the Diplomatico rum. It has a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of spice and it ties in perfectly with this drink. So I'm going to be starting by brewing my espresso. So first things first, if you can, always try to brew and grind coffee fresh. So there we've got our freshly ground coffee, which I'll show down the lens. It smells amazing. And then, second tip. Just like when you're cooking, you want to use fresh, clean equipment. The same with coffee. If you use dirty equipment, it's going to taint the flavour. So I'm going to add this to my water filter. Just give it a little level out. I have a push tamper to give you that kind of perfect levelling. And then we're going to brew the coffee 18 grams in for a 40 gram yield. And I'm using scales here to measure that.
also useful to have a timer just to keep an eye on your shot times, so then you can adjust your grind size. If it's running too quickly, you can go finer. If it's running too slowly, you can go a little bit coarser. And the specs of the drink, we're going to have our 40 gram espresso. Always freshly brewed if you can, just really helps that kind of texture. We're going to have some other pretty cool ingredients, all built in a protein shaker. So I'm using the protein scoop, and I know this is 90 ml because it says inside. So I'm going to add my 40 grams of espresso. I'm going to be adding 30 mils, Diplomatico Mantuano, or any kind of uh, sweet rum will work really well. So about a third of the way. Is it too early for an espresso martini? I think not. Then we're going to be adding 10 mils of Pedro Jimenez, which is a sweet sherry, kind of tastes like raisins, very sweet. And then, as a little complimentary flavour, 10 mils of Monin salted caramel. This is a syrup, it's got really kind of authentic flavour, obviously brings sweetness but also brings depth and kind of character as well. So the key to an espresso martini is that really amazing texture, almost cappuccino-like, really foamy. So you need to really give it a good shape, plenty of ice. So I'm going to get my ice from the freezer now. I'm using a big block like this, but it can be small blocks, whatever you fancy. And the cool thing about a protein shaker, it already has a strainer kind of built in, which you can see there. So two bows with one stone. Make sure the lid's on. So give it a really good shake, as hard as you can. When you shake it, you want to be able to see that kind of frothy texture. Okay, if you can, always nice to have a frozen glass. We'll give this a little strain. You can see that really nice cascading texture. And for the garnish, two things, both of which tie across all those flavours. So the first is a little twist of orange, a little wheel, here we go, expressed over the drink, because obviously we've got some pretty sweet ingredients in there. We've got the syrup, we've got the Pedro Jimenez with the sweet rum, and a nice espresso. And then finally, a little bit of cinnamon, which just ties in that really kind of nice rum flavour as well. So here is the rum and raisin espresso martini. And I would thoroughly recommend making this at home. Really simple, but I'm going to have a sip. And the cinnamon just adds a bit of complexity as well. Oh, that's so good. Not too sweet. I think that's really important. Don't make these things too sweet. So there we have the rum and raisin with salted caramel variation of an espresso martini. The second drink is a tropical spice variation of an espresso martini. So this kind of departs away from that classic flavour profile of the espresso martini that's very, very coffee forward. It adds a little bit more complexity, a little bit of a kind of tiki flavour to it, and it's based on the modern winter spice syrup. So this is a blend of spices, we've got ginger, but also chilli, which adds a little bit of heat. Then we've got clove, cinnamon, uh, and a blend of almost like mulling spices. So obviously the mind takes this to winter, but I think cold spice drinks work really, really well in summer, particularly when paired with things like pineapple, banana, um, those kind of tropical fruit flavours. So I'm going to be using the capsule machine, which I'm just going to turn on. And because capsules tend to have probably five or six grams of coffee, as opposed to the espresso, which had 18, I'm going to be using two capsules for this drink. A little tip of the capsule machine, just purge through one shot of water before you brew. And this will just clean through any of the old coffee and any of the old water from brewing yesterday. And this time, we're going to use the trusty egg cup. We're thanking the NHS, here's the rainbow. So, 
thanks to the NHS for doing the amazing work they do, and all frontline workers. So, we've purged through. It's not particularly too much, but you can just see a few bits of coffee in there, which I'm going to get rid of. And then, two capsules. This is a Rwandan Cup of Excellence coffee from Difference Coffee. Really delicious. And it has kind of a spice and tea-like note, as well as a rich kind of red fruit flavour, which really contrasts those tropical fruit flavours. And again, I'm going to be using a blender. So I'm not trying to make a blended pina colada or any kind of slushy style drink. I'm just going to be using this to kind of aerate. So there's one capsule. Drop that through. And another capsule. So obviously this is hot. When you make an espresso martini, obviously you want it to be cold. So rather than serving this in a nice kind of Nick and Nora glass like I did before, this time it's going to be served on ice. So we're going to be kind of bringing it down to temperature um, over ice. The blender will just do the aeration. Okay, so coffee is brewed and delicious. And then the specs for the drink, make it so you can see. Got 10 mils of modern winter spice. This is about a 35 mil egg cup. I guess that's the size of half an egg. So I'm gonna add some spice. 30 mils of this is the Balvenie Caribbean cask whiskey, aged in rum barrels, but I've also infused it with dried bananas. I find that's a really nice way to infuse banana into drinks. It's quite challenging to do. Um, whereas the dried bananas tend to work really well, as opposed to fresh. So we have 30 mils. 10 mils falernum, which again brings some of that kind of tropical character, a little bit of sweetness. Unsung hero of a lot of tiki drinks. And then, I want to really enhance that creaminess. So here we can have just a little bit of coconut milk. So again, only 10 mils, and I'm not making a milkshake, I'm not making a pina colada, I'm making an espresso martini, but that just small drop of the coconut milk really goes a long way. So we're going to blend. So we're going to blend, and as I do, I'll get my glass. And it really doesn't take long to get that really nice fluffy texture. So there we have the second variation, the tropical spice. It smells so good. It smells, it smells like banoffee pie almost. And as I said, I'm serving this in a more of a kind of pharmaceutical stimulant uh, style. So this is a frozen glass with some frozen clear ice inside. We're just going to pour it over the ice because we want pretty rapid dilution and chilling of the drink. And then the garnish is just going to be a little bit of toasted coconut. So this is the tropical spice espresso martini. I think this is probably my favourite. And yeah, it's ice cold already, the frozen glass, the really cold clear ice, which if you want to know how to do, you can watch Lucas um, on the Mon GP page. I'll give you the hacks on how to do this. Just really nice combination of flavours. It's kind of like halfway between the noffy pie and then those kind of tropical fruit notes as well. Really nice texture. The blender really, really helps. So there we have the tropical spice espresso martini. The third drink I'm going to be making takes these kind of flavour profiles and gives something completely different. This is a frangipan flavour profile based around an espresso martini. So obviously frangipan is a pastry base with almond and uh, well, almond marzipan and cherry. So this is going to be based around morning almond syrup, or jeet, or zat, however you want to pronounce it. And then I think what works really well for those kind of vanilla pastry nuts is a bourbon. So I've got buffalo trace. Brings a little bit of sweetness, um, but that kind of buttery, really nice, rich texture works really well. Gonna have a little bit of cherry brandy, 
cherry herring would also work really well. This brings up the cherry flavours. And then coffee-wise, I'm going to be making an almost espresso strength coffee with equipment that, barring the grinder, costs, I don't know, 25, maybe 30 pounds. So really easy to do at home, really inexpensive, and obviously not everyone has the luxury of making espresso at home. So we're going to be using this to recreate that. So, the method. AeroPress. And this has a plastic filter on the bottom made by a company called Fellow, which is not my company, but they do great products. Um, easy to order online, pretty inexpensive. And we're going to be adding a lot of coffee to this with not much water. So I've got 20 grams of coffee here. And I'm going to add this to the grinder. Same grind size as the espresso, incidentally. So really, really fine grind size. Put this into your AeroPress. Then it's going to be 100 grams of water. And that's going to be at 96 degrees, which I've got here. Here's one I prepared earlier. So using scales once again. Again, these are quite technical scales. A set of scales fundamentally can do the same job. We're not going to point one of a gram. As long as your scales get to the gram, I've even used counterbalances before in my grandma's house. So I'm going to start this at all of our 100 grams of water quite vigorously. Hundred-ish, Then we're going to give it a really good stir. To kind of, because it's a very short brew time, we want to really encourage that extraction. So by stirring, we increase the extraction rate. And we're going to do this for about thirty seconds. We're going to leave it to steep for another thirty seconds, and then at one minute, we're going to plunge down. And it will take a little bit of effort because it's such a fine grind size, but if you think an espresso machine has about up to nine bars of pressure, we're going to be needing that pressure to kind of get that almost crema on top of the drink. So this coffee, uh, it's a Brazilian coffee. So this kind of, once again, has those sort of vanilla chocolate notes, which work really well to complement the other flavours. So I'm going to give this a little plunge. And if you're making coffee at home at the moment, you're really missing your flat white. This is the perfect base for that. So I'll give you an espresso strength coffee, about 60 mils. Um, espresso probably be about 40, so it's just a little bit more diluted. But it's still got that real intense flavour. So, the strong coffee. And then, we just had a little baby boy. So here's one of his bottles. And I have tried this out, and it does work. Um, also, quite conveniently, it has the little measuring points on the side of the uh, flask, so we can use this to measure out the, the cocktail. I'm going to thoroughly wash it out and sterilise it before he uses it, don't worry. So, add our coffee. I don't think this would help his uh, lack of sleep at the moment if I gave him coffee. And then, 30 mils of bourbon. So, I'm going to add that there. It should be quite precise. 10 mils of the cherry brandy. And then finally, 10 mils of that almond syrup, or heat, or jet. Yeah. Okay. And now we're going to give it a really good shake. So this time I'm just going to be using a little sieve. You might have something a little bit bigger at home, you might have something a bit smaller or a tea strainer, but I'm going to be using a little bit of tube dice to do a bit of shake. Again, I'm quite lucky to have space in my freezer to freeze glasses at the moment. There's a cool door, which I've kind of taken over. But if you don't have that, you can just fill your glass up with ice beforehand. Give it a really uh, good chill down with that ice. So make sure the lid's on. Feels a bit strange. Give it a good shake. It's getting really cold now. And again, you can see that texture is just coming through. See it kind of settling. And you're on that almost Guinness like cascade. So this time, 
going to slightly bigger hoop less. And we're going to use that sieve to strain out any of the uh, ice. So ordinarily, I would be garnishing this with something like a cocktail cherry or some toasted almonds. Supermarkets are very limited at the moment, so we're going to have to uh, go with the straight drink. And here we have the Frangipan Espresso Martini. Cheers. Mm. If I didn't know, uh, I would not say this didn't have fresh espresso in it. It's got that amazing texture, you can see the kind of layer of crema and kind of foam on top. I was thinking espresso martini should be like, an, like a cappuccino in texture. And even the other two, still holding up really, really well. So really give it a good shake, get your coffee nice and strong. And there we have three variations on an espresso martini. And I really hope everyone's safe, hope everyone's well, and thank you very much for joining me today. Long live the espresso martini and stay safe.